Tonse. Hello, my friends, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Tonse, let's speak Cree. In today's episode, we are going to talk about how to write down Cree and the sounds of Cree. To start with writing, there are two major ways to write down Cree. Number one, the Roman Standard Orthology, which uses a modified Latin alphabet. This is what I will be using for this entire series. It was developed most prominently by Jean Ogamasis. It is also the standard way to write down the Plains Cree dialect, with most favoring its use. Number two, Cree syllabics. Originally developed for Ojibwe, the missionary who invented it found the Cree syllable structure and fewer vowels to work better with it. However, it has not caught on in the Plains Cree dialect as much, and so I will be using the Latin alphabet. But we'll also teach in this video how to use the Cree syllabics as well, as it is handy to have in your back pocket. The Cree alphabet contains 14 letters, A, C, E, H, I, K, M, N, O, P, S, T, W, and Y. We'll start by talking about the consonants. If you are familiar with some Slavic languages that use the Latin alphabet, the use of C will be familiar as it is used for a S sound, like at the end of cats in English, although some communities use a CH. I will be sticking to tsa for this letter. K will have a different sound depending on its circumstance. If it is between two vowels, it will become a g sound. This is because phonetically speaking, k and g are very similar sounds. K does not use vibrating vocal cords, while g does. Vowels always use vibrating vocal cords or voicing to make the sound. So when it is in between two voiced sounds, it will become the voiced g. Otherwise, K represents a K sound. What happens with K also happens with P, this time between P and B. The same difference separates these two sounds. One is voiced, B, and the other is not, P. As such, the same rule applies, where when it is in between two vowels, P will become B. The last letter to behave like this is T, which will become D between two vowels and T elsewhere. Y will behave differently depending on where you speak. In some communities, Y will not represent that Y. Instead, it will be pronounced as TH. This is not considered the standard way to speak, but it is important to note that it will occasionally make the sound based on the speaker. But I will be sticking with Y, as it is the more universal way of saying this letter. This is also why Y sometimes has an accent above it. Next, the vowels. There are seven vowels in Plains Cree. They are represented by the letters A, E, I, and O. Three can be short, A, E, and O. Then four are long, A, E, E, and O. Long vowels have macrons, a line, or circumflexes, the points, over them, entirely depending on the person. I will be using circumflexes, though both are pretty widely used. It is important to note the sounds are different than in English. A is said like in father, a. I is said like in pit, e. And o is said like the first o in oppose, o. The long vowels are a little different than their short counterparts. A is the same, but longer. E is said like the y in happy. O, when it becomes long, is like the o in soul. Finally, long a eh is said like the famous Canadianism a. Eh. When it comes to standards for writing, it is done in all lowercase. In addition, a dash in verbs is to show preverbs, though we'll get into that much later. The punctuation is just like in English. When talking about the syllabics, we must understand that the syllabics represent most of a syllable, not just a single sound. Starting with the vowels, they are e. O, A, and E. Now you might notice something here. They're all the same symbol, but they look in different directions. This is the same as all symbols, well most. The direction they are facing determines the vowels that follow. If they have a dot above, they are long vowels, other than E, which is always long and doesn't have a dot. Most symbols are like this, other than a few. H is represented as the symbol, followed by a vowel E, a, a, or a, or their long counterparts. W is shown in a different way. 
This is because it can appear in between a consonant and a vowel. It is represented by a dot after the symbol, showing the use of W. Finally, what happens to the sound at the end of a syllable? This is where the finals come in. They simply represent the final part of the syllable. There is also an extra symbol that doesn't have a full counterpart. This is due to its common usage at the end of a syllable, hence its inclusion. Due to loanwords, these two symbols are included to represent L and R and are used like the symbol for H. And now you can read Plains Cree. This is just the first episode, so we didn't get into learning much about grammar and words. But I hope this will provide a strong base to understand how and why Cree is spoken the way it is. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more Cree videos. Hey, hey.